What do you call a tip about freezing a large track in Cakewalk by Banlab? The tip of the iceberg. You, you know, it's a frozen track iceberg. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Back by popular demand, I've got five more fabulous, amazing, life-saving cakewalk secrets or tips for you today. They're in no particular order. Let's just get started with my first tip, Peaky Finders. Once in a while, we have to deal with some clipping in Cakewalk. You can see here in the second to last bus on the right hand side here that the last time I played this song, uh, this bus did clip. We've got a couple of red markers there at the top of the meter. And then below the meter, we can see it peaked at 0 0.5 dB. So it's gone 0.5 dB over zero, which means we're getting a little bit of digital clipping there. We don't want that. So where did that happen? Well, I'm going to show you how to find out where the highest levels are either on tracks or on buses in Cakewalk using some peak tools. So I'm going to close the console here so that we can go to the track view here. And then I'm going to go up to options. Then I'm going to go down to meter options and then go down to where it says show track peak meters. OK, so I'll click on that and you can see right away that there's some little green flags have appeared on my tracks. OK, if I play over a section, you'll see them continually updating. So I'll just play it for a moment. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. I wake up in the morning and you've gone away. Now, if I allow it to keep playing, then that's going to be updated on these other tracks as well. So I can clearly see from the sections I've played exactly where the actual peaks are there. So what if I want to do that on a bus? At the moment, in this view, we are only showing these tracks like so. You can show the buses, including the master bus. If you go down to the bottom and just click on this little icon here, I'll just click on that. There may be a keyboard shortcut for that, which I've uh, forgotten at the moment. So let me know in the comments down down below if you know that keyboard shortcut so now we have a little section here we've got a divide i'll just drag that up we've got a little section here which shows all the buses now what we can do is go up to options at the top again just click on that go down to meter options again and then click on show bus peak meters so i'll press that and then i'll just play my song again you're always telling me that you're here to stay I wake up in the morning and you and conveniently we can also easily see that this one has peaked because it's showing this bright red flag there as well so we can visually see right away um, that that's where the highest peak has occurred at that point when we've played this section of the song now another little last tip on this is you can quickly go to the peak by going over here on the uh, on the left hand side there you can see where it's showing the peak number there 0 0.5 right click on that and then you can click on go to peak and it's going to move the playhead exactly to that peak okay so some little tips there for finding the loudest part of a track or a whole song so there are basically two groups of effects that we use in Cakewalk. There's the Pro Channel modules, and then there's everything else, which includes VST and DirectX effects. We can see them over here on this first channel in my project, this vocal channel. If I expand the Pro Channel here by clicking on this little icon, you can see the modules that I'm using there in the Pro Channel, and I'll just pop that back in there and then below that you can see the other effects that I've got inserted there so the routing goes from the top to the bottom so we start off with the gain control at the top then it works its way down through the pro channel modules when it's finished with those it then goes on to the effects section and works its way down through those but what if you want to mix them up what if you want to have some say VST or direct effects in between some of the pro channel modules you can do that and you may have missed this so I'll open up that pro channel there and I'm going to go down to a point where I want to insert a different effect. So I want something in between, say, this EQ module here and this tube module here. So I'll right click on the header of the tube module. I'll go to insert module and then I go across to effects chain here. And I'm just going to click on that. 
and that inserts an effects chain. I can then just go ahead and insert my other types of effects as I normally would. So I'll just click on plus here, insert audio effects, and let's go down to Cakewalk and insert, for example, I don't know, uh, Sonatus Reverb. I'll pop that in there. Okay, so I've got Sonatus Reverb in there. And look, you can even rename that if you like. So I just double clicked on where it says effects chain and I put Reverb. All right, so now I have my other types of effects. I can put a number in there in between these pro channel modules. Now you can put that in, insert that into another place as well. So I could go further down here, say in between uh, where it's set, where, where I've got the console C here and the tube. And again, I'll just right click insert module. Whoops, go ahead to effects chain. And I can obviously go ahead and insert another audio effect there. So you can mix and match them. It's very easy to do. And it's done like that. Oh, by the way, are you finding this video useful? If you are, go ahead and hit the like button for me. Do it right away so that you don't forget. If you're not finding this video useful, hit the dislike button with care. You may find that just a little bit of your soul dies in the process. If you do like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified about my other videos. Now, back to this video. So this next tip falls into the category of an oldie but a goodie. But if you are new to Cakewalk, you may not know about this one. In fact, I'm not even sure how much longer you're going to be able to do this for. We'll talk about that later. But first of all, let's look at this scenario. I've got some virtual drums loaded up here. I'm using Addictive Drums too. And then I've got the MIDI for those on the second track here. Okay, I'll play that quickly for you. lovely i'm sure now if i double click on that track there it opens up the piano roll here and you can see that i've used a number of different drums in this groove now it's sometimes to our advantage to have each of these drums on their own separate midi track aha some of the old timers going i know what he's going to do let's do it for the young folks guys so we'll just close that piano roll there okay now before we do this there's something we need to take note of i'm just going to select this track here which has got the midi on it and in the inspector over here i'm just going to go down to the bottom and just check the output there now i know it's going to addictive drums i'll just open that up there you can see there's a number of different outputs available to me and addictive drums is number four we just need to remember that number number four okay now once we've done that we've taken note of that we're going to press Control and f1 on our keyboards that opens up this file selector now this has gone to a particular folder which has something in there called cal scripts c-a-l not c-o-w that would be silly okay so we're going to go down to this one here which is called split note to tracks we will select that and click on open now with this first dialog box we're going to select our source track so that's the second track there so we'll change that to number two click on ok then the first destination track i'm going to leave that as number two and then i'll click on ok uh, then the destination channel um, i'll leave that to zero i don't know 10 is a tradition for drums but i think we can leave it on zero i'll click on ok and then the the destination port this is the number we had to remember remember it was number four for addictive drums so i'll just change that to number four there click on ok and you can see it automatically takes each of those drums and assigns it onto a new track i can play that again now Now this can be quite handy. You may want to handle these notes in different ways. I think especially when you're uh, thinking about quantizing, for example, you may want to use different quantize settings for different tracks. You may not want to quantize some of the tracks while you do want to quantize others. So this can be quite useful. However, I did mention at the beginning that you may not be able to do this forever. That's because um, these cow scripts that I was talking about uh, are something which is going to be phased out of Cakewalk at at some point i'm not sure what the technical term for that is it's gonna be defunct now hopefully fingers crossed uh, cakewalk are going to make sure that they have some of these features built into cakewalk before they get rid of cow scripts if you're watching cakewalk it would be nice if you would do that especially with this one which is probably the most used of those cow scripts take a look at them anyway and see which ones are useful to you 
Now I have covered this next feature before, sandwiched somewhere in another video, so I still get a lot of messages about this. So I thought I'd cover it here again for you today. And I'm gonna be talking about the transform tool. This is a tool that we've got available to adjust some of our values when we're looking at some MIDI. So I've got my drums here um, that we were looking at earlier, and you can see I've got all of the velocity values open at the bottom here. Now, if I wanna make some changes to a lot of these at one time, it's, of course, it can be quite fiddly. You could select them like this at the top, like so, and then I can go ahead and adjust them all at once. That's kind of an okay way of doing it, but sometimes we wanna do things a little bit more complex than that, so I'll undo that. So we switch on the transform tool by going down to the bottom left and just clicking here where it says transform, and then you can see the tool appears over the top of this velocity data here, okay? So it's a kind of a range of things which have been selected there. Now you can change that range by grabbing the edge, okay? And then just selecting a different area like so okay it doesn't actually make any changes yet um we can also do use the top and the bottom to do that as well okay but i'm going to select everything um, from top to bottom there and the edges okay and now to go ahead and make some changes in there i need to adjust one of these white circles okay so i'm just going to do the straightforward one at the moment and adjust all of these velocities i'm going to scale them all at once so like so you can see a little kind of a preview as you do it there and then i can stop that there okay so i've adjusted all of those velocities like that i'll undo that again now if i wanted to do something like a ramp i can grab the corners and then i can do this like so again look at that preview to get an idea of what's going to happen and I can do that. So really, really useful, um, for especially when you're doing ramps like so. Now, if you were to do just a scale like I did a moment ago, let's do that again. You can see that quite often there's going to be an abrupt difference between what became before and what came after, okay? Um, and that is going to definitely sort of show up in the sound of things. So we can actually um, apply something called soft mode to account for that. Just at the edge of the transform tool, you can see this little icon here that toggles the soft mode on and off. I'll switch it on now. You can see these little round curves appear to indicate that it's on. Now, if I do the same adjustments again you can see if you look carefully at that preview you can see that the changes at the edges are less dramatic than the changes in the middle okay they're scaled a little bit differently that means that as we make that adjustment there's a bit of a blend happening before the velocities before and the velocities after by the way this is not just useful for velocities it can be used for all different kinds of um, cc's and expression etc like i have here for example okay so um we can adjust also the the sort of scaling off that of that soft mode i'll undo again um once we're in soft mode you can see these extra bars appear at the beginning and the end we can move those in and out okay and that changes the sort of range um, of effect of that soft mode okay so again i'll make some adjustments and you can see that i can make a really nice smooth transition now between these velocities before and after okay if i switch off the transform tool you can kind of see that it's a lot more gradual at the edge there so that's the transform tool a nice organic way to make changes in bulk to some of your values in your midi so i bet some of you have suffered from this problem and it drove you absolutely nuts well fear not i'm going to end your suffering hopefully well at least in terms of this problem so the situation is i've got this song loaded up and i want to go ahead and export it okay so what you'd normally do is just go up to the top right here i've got project selected and then i'll click on export and i'll go through a few different options there now what cakewalk does is it's able to find where the end of the song is automatically for you and it does that very very well except when it doesn't okay because sometimes things happen in an unexpected way in fact i just exported this song and it should be about three and a half minutes long or so but i've found that the file is actually about five and a half minutes long let me show you i'm going to drag that file into this bottom track down here okay drop it in there give it a moment to render you can see it should be ending around about here but in fact it's going on much longer than anything else i'll just drag this to the side yet there's definitely nothing else going on up here so why has it exported this much longer 
That's because Cake Hawk thinks this song is that long. Why is it thinking that? Well, the key is in the fact that there are some things that may be hidden from view here, okay? So let me just get rid of this here, and I'll delete that there so that I can show you what I mean. The, now, we can sort of see this in actual fact. If we do select the first track up here and then click on Control-A to select all of the tracks, we can see that the selector up the top here has gone all the way up here. It's finding something in this area that we're not seeing here. So what are some of the things that may be hidden from view that it's finding well first of all i would encourage you to open up your uh, bus view so i'm just going to click on this icon here to show the bus pane click on that and now we can see the buses now here's something here look at this here i've got a little bit of automation on this strings channel here and that automation is going all the way up to here it's not needed up there anymore there's no more sound so i could just pop a node in there just end it around about there and just get rid of that last node okay so i'll delete that that's fine but if i now go if i close that again and i'll go ahead and select all of the tracks again Control a yep it's still finding something else now that would have caused that problem but there's something else there as well so another place i may look is up here i'll go to view and i'm going to look for tempo track show and hide i'll open that one aha i made some tempo changes when the song was much longer all the way up here it's finding those and it's seeing those as a part of the song so i'll just delete those two tempo change nodes there okay they're gone let me go ahead and select all again so i'll select that first track Control a aha uh -huh. look at that range selector at the top now looks about right doesn't it okay so there just keep in mind when you're trying to diagnose this problem there may be things hidden from view they may not always be notes they may be things like tempo tracks you know which are creating kind of data or things events happening if you like now talking about events another way that you can diagnose this is to use the events list now i'm not going to give you a full a full tutorial on the events list but just in case you don't know i'll just select all of those tracks again Control a and i'm going to press alt eight that brings up the events list it's literally a list of events which are happening in the song okay it shows you the start time of those events and what kind of events they are there's lots of note events here so you could scroll down towards the end and sort of see if there's anything happening there as well that would be another way you may be wanting to diagnose it now if all of that fails if you're just in a hurry you've got time to mess around with this stuff then just select a range okay so what you would do in this case is is just use that range selector at the top there drag it to where you want it in this case i'll just put it just after um, where i can see the last bit of music that i want and then when you export just change this at the top right to selection okay and then it's only going to export that um, particular range of the music be a little bit careful with this um, there can be things that sort of happen after the last note has been played let's say for example you had an abrupt end to this and there was a there was a midi note right in the end it was the very last note but you had lots of reverb applied to that and you wanted that to that echoey kind of sound or reverb sound to sort of decay out past the end of that last night just be mindful of that because you're not going to see that here okay um i hope that is helpful because you know i know it's driven a lot of people absolutely bonkers in the past what i love about making these videos is there will always be someone in the comments who will tell me how i could have done things just a little bit better and i very much appreciate that so make sure you read some of the comments down below so you can find out about any extra little tips to go along with what i've showed you today also let me know in the comments down below which one of these was most useful to you i'd love to hear about that now don't forget to check the link in the description for my patreon.com where for as little as one dollar per month you can help me help you by making more videos like this and i'll see you in the next video.